Hello again and welcome to Vilnius. Well, today we're going to talk about my 100th video that has activated. Well, not 100th video, 100th review actually. My 100th re review will be a, an absolute stonker of a movie. I'm going to talk today about Quentin Tarantino's absolutely best movie he has ever done. It is called Django Unchained and it is, it is exactly the opposite of the Jeeper Champagne that I have today here on the on New Year's Day which I'm enjoying or try to enjoy at least. It is silky and smooth and absolutely spectacular. Let's take a look at Django Unchained. Thanks me from yesterday. Django Unchained is a sort of remake, sort of, but not, from the old Django movies from the 60s. I've seen a couple of them and they are uh, okay. I would say they're okay to good. When this movie was announced, I thought we were gonna get the Spaghetti Western homage galore, but as it is with the, the, the Tarantino movies, this isn't the movie you expect it to be you're always ending up getting something else. Whether or not it was better than you expected or not as good as you expected, I don't know really, but for my money this was actually a lot better. This movie takes place a couple of years before the uh, American Civil War, so slavery is uh, still a big thing and should have been a big thing about most Westerns, but they never really, you know, have that in mind for some reason and uh, one of, which was one of the reasons why uh, Tarantino wanted to tell this story this way. So one of these slaves, uh, Django, is freed by Dr. King Shields played by Christoph Waltz. This is not by some altruistic reasons. It is a business side to this one because Django possesses intimate knowledge about the Brittle brothers that uh, uh, Waltz is after. Waltz is a dentist slash uh, bounty hunter, which is an odd career choice, but well, what are you gonna do? So this is not a revenge plot as you might have think, because the Brittle brothers are dispatched of fairly fast. So what are we gonna spend the next two hours of this movie with? Well, the thing is that Django has a wife that uh, is being uh, kept somewhere in the south. They soon find out that he's being kept by uh, Candy, uh, at, uh, played by Leonardo DiCaprio, a plantation owner of the, well, let's say, rather unpleasant kind. They have to try to rescue her, but if they're gonna, you know, make it out, they're gonna have to do this uh, legally and therefore they're gonna have to use stealth and they're gonna have to use cunning and intelligence to be able to, to, to free her because Dr. Schultz argues that uh, if Candy understands that uh, they, they really want Broomhilde, which is a really unusual name for a slave in 1856, so then Candy will never let her go for any price, so they're gonna have to do something else. So here we go. Now, the, f the reasons why this movie is so good, the reason why this movie is so good, apart from the laser-focused direction, apart from the Razor Sharp Academy Award-winning uh, writing, it is the four main characters. Holy shit. We have Jamie Foxx maybe being the least good of these four, but still he's He's extremely likable, we're with him all the way. He has, he, ha he has this stoic and grand presence about him and whoa, it's Jamie Foxx's best performance by a long shot. Then we have Samuel the Elder Jackson, as you could label him in this movie, because this is maybe one of the few movies where Samuel Jackson shows his true age. I mean, the man seems to not be affected by time. What the fuck is going on here? 
who really, really, really hates Django and who really, really, really is an unpleasant character. There is something nasty about him that makes it impossible to like him despite doing all the usual uh, Samuel Jackson ness that we all know and love. But somehow he, he, he's too unpleasant and too nasty for us to to, to sympathize with him at all. That is something rare for Jackson to pull off. If somebody in the late 90s would have said to me that I would consider Leonardo DiCaprio in 15 years time one of the greatest actors of all time, I would have asked where do you live so I can uh, uh, paint the, the word liar on your house because a liar would have lived there. He's so great in this one. He's so completely unpleasant. This very well-dressed, very well-mannered and very sadistical, completely uncomplex fucking asshole who for some reason, you know, really believes what he's doing is the correct thing and he really believes in everything he does. And that is what all sort of villainy comes from, that you believe what you do is the right. You believe that you're the hero of the story. You believe that you have all the right to do what you do and there is, and it is the logical thing. And that is what makes him so scary and that makes him so unhinged. Because when he snaps, you really see you know, the, the, the layer of cracks and you see the monster underneath. Jesus Christ, what a performance. This is the movie that should have gotten him an Academy Award. Not walking around in, for two and a half hours and eating raw fish. Where was I? Oh, yes. Uh, and then, of course, we have Dr. King Schultz, AKA the most likable character of all time. I don't think I've ever liked a character more than Dr. King Schultz. He just, he's just such a nice guy. And I love seeing nice guys, you know, that isn't, uh, you know, shoving down their throat how nice they are. Look how nice I am. No, Dr. King Schultz just oozes of, of self-confidence and he just, He's just so, he just loves playing this character. This is the complete opposite of uh, Hans Landa. And uh, it is impossible not to like him. And his amazing dialogue, the, 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 the amazing thing he does. And also, he carries the movie in the first 25 minutes, AKA the best this side of the millennium. This is the best first 25 minutes of the millennium. Jesus Christ, they're good. Monty Python and the Holy Grail, also has maybe the best 25, first 25 minutes of a movie, but it's very neck and neck with this one. Now these four characters are the reason this movie rises into the stratosphere, because the story, in fact, isn't too great or too complicated, but it doesn't really matter, because they make you want to see what's going to happen. I mean, sure, as all Tarantino movies goes, it, it drags a little bit and some things you could have totally skipped, but that's what all Tarantino movies are. Because what it does, it, it wheels you slowly in. It just, it, it wheels you slowly in because when it does, the brutality and the shootout, they are earned. And the ending of this movie, Jesus Christ, it is fantastic. It is awesome. And it, it, this is one of these absolutely greatest movies I have seen in my entire life. It's, it's one of the greatest westerns of all time. It is one of the top three westerns of all time. The script, everything just works, works flawlessly. And there are moments in this one that is completely heart-stoppingly good. And the tension, everything just works on a totally different spectrum. I don't really care that the, the story itself, as I said, isn't that complicated or even that impressive. It doesn't matter because this movie, I started sounding like Dusty Rhodes there for a second. This movie is simply, is simply one of a kind. It is Tarantino's finest work. It, I don't think he will ever top this one. If you've never seen Django Unchained, and if you, if you want to see how he's going to try to, to rescue Broomhilde, see this movie. This is one of the greatest movies this decade and the best movie of an absolutely stonker year, the 2012. Jesus, it's good. 
and it keeps getting better every time I see it. Also, fun fact, there is a, there is a small cameo from the original Django in, in this one. The weird thing is, he doesn't look that much older either. Weird. This movie also sports some pretty awesome cinematography and to, to just add some, some finishing touches. Also, we're gonna get an extended review for this one because of course we're fucking gonna do. It's Django Unchained. Great cinematography, one of the greatest scripts I've ever seen. Amazing performances and Tarantino's best movie. This movie gets 98 points. I'll see you next time. Where? I don't know. What I'm gonna review? I don't know either, but this I know. The V-Trend is signing out.